repeat videos at times, Stephen got out. So I'm just going to um, go back on the Rochdale to Manchester Canal today. So just a brief introduction. Um, I'm walking from Pillsworth over to Haywood, similar to when I walked to Middleton. So we're going to start with some of the um, reservoirs and mills in this area that would have existed. Once upon a time, that is. So today, just like the Phoenix, as usual, I'm going to attempt to bring Haywood and Rochdale via the canal back to life, that journey before the trains and roads. So we are travelling on foot over Hillsworth Moor. This is Hollingsbrook area. It feeds this imaginative old lake system, which of course has a strange twist and it just looks quite cool. I, I really do like it. But I look at these and you can tell that they're designed and it's what's called bespoke. But it's designed exactly the right size for the mill so then you can look at this lake and think oh yeah i understand how big the mill was and what age that mill was put in place and you know they built one at a time didn't all go in at the same time and they would have been much smaller places which slowly grew just like the modern world so that's what i don't just see a pond in the field here i see like a, a, a taste of history if you like um i was what some information on YouTube, some people, you know, canal enthusiasts. And Manchester Rochdale Canal does get some bad reviews because it's it's in bad repair. You know, people in the Cotswolds are used to seeing flowers and wildlife along the canals and sunny days. This is a bit broken, it goes through the city, it's got some junk in it usually, it overflows and it's not the prettiest thing but the canal we're going to cover, and we are covering in this playlist, is one of the oldest in history. And this actual canal changed the entire world. Everybody's life right now has been affected by this canal. This actual one. Um, it travels through Manchester city centre, through like, the modern city centre that's been built in the year 2020. It's all internet based, you know, skyscrapers, and the canal flows through it. So to me, I think it is absolutely fantastic. And I know it rains, but you can't go to Manchester and say, oh, it's rainy. That's just like going to Spain and saying it's too hot. You know, it's that's silly. And to say it's a bit grimy, this canal, it's supposed to be grimy. It's a part of history. <clears throat> so that said, I shall explain the strange twist of this lake. So the iron poles at the start, they should be releasing water uh, for the old Pillsworth bleaching mill in the direction towards the sun. The direction the sun's shining from. But it's actually filling at that end. So the guy channel from a weir nearby is under the lake and in a pipe to get some pressure and it goes underneath the lake and pops up at the wrong end so the mill is on the far end and it's upstream but at the point of Hollins Brook it crosses the lake uh, there's a pump house so I assume that crosses back this way and causes pressure so you've got more pressure, uh, it's higher. And it's less likely to have fish and frogs and things like that inside the mill. So there you go, it's a pressure pipe system. It's quite complicated, it just it looks just like any other lake. But it's an industrial pond. So I mean, these are like um, electric substations. They're industrial. And I know people look at them and they look pretty now. 
but once upon a time they were full of oil and grime and bleach and the canal was the same <clears throat> but the canals and the, the industrial revolution in these areas changed the entire world so i know they don't look pretty but they weren't built to be pretty they were the only thing they were like the motorways of the time and the you know the workhouses of the time so i think they look brilliant personally uh, Pillsworth Clough Mill was also further along. Uh, it has a dam, so possibly they had to share out the water between two mills from Hollinsbrook running through Hollinsvale past Hollins House. Uh, that has now been demolished. So we are crossing over Sidal, Sidal Moor towards. Banks Croft, an area which is now just a street called Banks Croft, and it's officially Hotwood, but we will soon reach um, another section of the Rochdale Manchester Salvey Bridge Canal. It's the Castleton train station and locks. The Rochdale Canal was conceived in 1776 when a group of 48 men from Rochdale raised £237. They commissioned James Brindley to conduct a survey of possible routes between Sowerby Bridge and Manchester. Brindley proposed a route similar to the one built and another more expensive route that was via Berry. Uh, further progress was not made until 1791. Um, John Rennie was asked to make a new survey in June that year and two months later to make surveys for branches to Rochdale, Oldham and to lime works near Todmorden. Rennie at the time had no experience of building canals. Promoters unsure as to whether to build a wide or narrow canal postponed this decision until the Act of Parliament had been obtained. The first attempt to obtain an Act was made in 1792. Uh, it was opposed by the mill owners concerned about the water supply. Rennie proposed using steam pumping engines, three in Yorkshire and eight in Lancashire and one on the Burnley branch. So there's branches all along it to the places in Lancashire. Uh, but the mill owners argued that 59 mills would be affected by the scheme, resulting in massive unemployment. So the bill was defeated. Manchester, UK. Have we put it on that time? Firmwell can click at about 236 decibels. It's the loudest animal on the planet. Sperm whales can hear each other in the ocean from hundreds, even thousands of miles away. Some researchers believe that they're able to keep in contact with one another through these clicks on the other sides of the planet. Uh, these clicks are so powerful in the water that they can blow out your eardrums easily and they can actually vibrate the human body to death.
So in September 1792, William Crossley and John Longbotham surveyed the area in an attempt to find locations for the reservoirs, which would not affect water supplies to the mills. A second bill was presented to Parliament for a canal which would have 3,000 yard, 2,700 metre tunnel through the Pennines and 11 reservoirs, again the bill was defeated. Yeah, it was defeated by just one vote. Uh, the promoters, in an attempt to understand the mill owner's position, asked William Jessup to survey the parts of the proposed canal that were causing the, like, the most concern to people. Uh, Mr Jessup gave evidence to the Parliamentary Committee and on the 4th of April 1794, an act was obtained which created the Rochdale Canal Company and an authorised construction. So Rennie's estimated cost in the second bill was £291,000, which was different back then. It not only was more money, it was shillings. Uh, and the company was empowered to raise the money by issuing shares. Uh, the powers to raise a further £100,000 if necessary. The estimate was for a narrow canal, whereas the Act authorised a broad canal, full-size canal. And so the capital was never going to be adequate. So basically you've got to make the big one to pay for it. The summit tunnel was abandoned in favour of 14 additional locks over the Pennines to save £20,000. Jessup proposed constructing each lock with a drop of three metres exactly and the same width, resulting in efficient use of water, so each lock drops the same amount each time, and the need to manufacture only one size of lock gate. In the modern world, we'd call that lean management, just to make things more efficient. The canal opened in stages as sections were completed, so the Rochdale branch was the first, where we'll see today, 1798, and further sections, 1799, and the bottom nine locks opened in 1800. The boats using the Ashton Canal could reach Manchester. Officially, the canal opened in 1804, but construction work continued for three more years, a 1.5 mile branch to Haywood, and Castleton opened 1834. So we're going to see those sections today. The reservoir will be another section. So I just uh, filmed the truck passing by. I'm going to be rather loud because we're in a industrial zone. The pub situated on the corner which is closed has been there for a long time since Norman days. Uh, 
uh, most public houses have uh, a history of pubs could probably take the rest of this short movie so you just have to trust me on that the three arrows may relate to the fact there's three roads in the area we're just strolling along you'll see massive industrial estate it's Haywood distribution centre uh, the massive warehouses uh, you know say a few football fields in size each warehouse uh, it's situated close to the motorway links the motorway which took out one of the villages in this area in Cove Birch comes right through it and is now a service station for the motorway so on one side of the road the road is what changes everything in the motor vehicle so the distribution centre they deliver massive goods to here and then break them down to the smaller shops in the area. Uh, I gave you a glimpse, there's plenty of catalogue stores, other catalogue stores in the area, other online delivery companies, catalogue based internet companies. And just on the other side of the road is farms. And that's what it would have looked like when, before the distribution centre was built. Um, I think it's around 1990. But as I say, the fields and that sort of area, the moorland here, dates back to the year 900 and beyond. It goes way back into land ownership. They were ruled by knights of the realm at that time. Anyway, that's a different story. What's important is Hollins Brook has flowed through here for a long, long time also. Uh, there's evidence of a mill and a site that needs to use the water, possibly even still. It's now a distribution centre, it's not a sort of a production site. So it looks like they've left that in when they put the industrial estate in. That'd be easier to leave it than re channel and culvert the whole brook. The first section begins here at Key Street on Manchester Road, Haywood. It originally was totally level from Haywood to Rochdale. Uh, it has two lock gates, sorry, although there is a large reservoir of water from Rochdale through to Castleton. It drops down at Drub and it drops down once more from Drub. There's just two locks between Haywood and the Rochdale Basin. Um, so remember once it was just the quickest link, especially with no um, other farms of like the roads weren't very good. They had horses and cart but it took a long time on you know, dirt tracks and cobbled streets. Uh, we'll find as much as possible of the canal today. This canal, as I've said, it may not be pretty. It's a bit tatty. It's a toughy though, and that's that. So we're on um, the cobble street here. This is the towpath for the horses. The wharf and the canal section are now filled with concrete in the, in the car park. Uh, the far wall is the warehouse that was built at the same time as the wharf and that's obviously well gone now but the, that's the outside wall which goes right round but there's no roof and there's nothing inside I think it's a private yard for a warehouse
this is the outside wall of the structure wharf and warehouse we're going to walk between the LYR Liverpool line and this wharf it'd be nice to have a bit of a send off to resurrect our journey via the canal they used to have big open days whenever they made these journeys for the first time just walk along this wall So the railway station is the Lancashire Yorkshire Railway Company. It's the Liverpool, Bolton and Berry line. In 1848 this canal branch would be brand new along with the steam locomotives. Uh, sadly the horses would now slowly be retired but the air is going to get polluted. It is now the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the water and the land is also going to get poisoned. This is the area of the Phoenix Brewery. The LYR working sheds were here also. As I said, they used to build things bespoke for the railways. Uh, Sefton Street and Sefton Mill. Once Lancashire and Manchester uh, were mainly, was mainly farms, villages, shires, lords and apparently was full of witches and unfortunate punishments for not paying your taxes. Beer was also a favourite pastime then as it is now. So small breweries went big. Boddington's being probably the most famous of all. They started small, grew rapidly, but all collapsed to more popular lager beer. But drinking is still very much a part of this city, mainly socially. Uh, Topeth Moor Farm used to stand just up the road and T th sand pits <laughs> believe it or not that was a road <laughs> top of th sand pits see that's old language phoenix imperial pale ale was made at the brewery gem table ale double stout uh, nutritious and wholesome beer green lane haywood <laughs> telephone 6231 won't get through anymore, would you? In this 1940s movie, Rolo the robot butler caters to a housewife's every whim. Rolo, answer the door. Yes, ma'am. Rolo, yes. A helpful chrome-plated companion seems a dream come true. But not everyone likes the idea of a mechanical manservant. In 1940, a robot butler is only a daydream. But of course, since then, we have made robots a vital part of our lives. In 2020, we share planet Earth with an estimated 9 million robots functioning 3 million of which work in factories but they're also out on American roads in the form of self-driving cars Railway Brow would have been the sidings for the LYR company's railway it had over 16 separate tracks and lines started there. Oh, 
we'll get to the first of two locks between here and Hayward. This is Castleton. We have a way marker. 